Hi guys, welcome back. I've been working on a few things or trying to and trying to get them loaded, but I just haven't been successful with doing that. One of the things that I've been working on is my doodle and sketch box that came the other day. But the Dusker Challenge does not come out on Instagram until tomorrow. So that is why I have not posted my Doodle and Sketchbox. Somebody was asking me about that. And I also have been working with some gouache too. Um, so I'm going to be doing videos on gouache painting in the future. But I am not a gouache artist, so I've been working on a couple in my Moleskine book because they don't require as much water. Um, this one is one that I finished today, and I'm working on another one. I'm right in the middle of it, so um, that one will take a little while. But anyway, I'm working on these, and once I get my hang of things, then I will go ahead and do a video on that. But there were a couple things I wanted to show you today. So, um... First of all, I received in the mail the other day, and it took over a month to get here, I ordered a fountain pen, a Pilot fountain pen, and it's very similar to the um, Platinum Carbon desk, fountain desk pens that we get, but this one, um, you have to order a converter for it. They come in different colors. Isn't this pretty? Red is like my favorite color. I tend to go towards red and lime green. So um, between the two, you guys have seen my pencil box. It's lime green. You should see my winter coat. It's lime green too. Um, but anyway, this is the pen. And I've already put the converter in it. You have to buy the Pilot converter. Whenever you buy a pen online, you need to check to see if the converter comes with it. And if it does not come with a converter or a cartridge, then you need to purchase one separately. And what I do is I Google what cartridge I need for whatever pen I'm buying. And it'll give me the cartridge name or number, and then I go back and look it up, and I usually find it. So um, this one is the converter for, for this Pilot pen. This is the extra fine point, and although the extra fine point on the um, platinum carbon pen is nice. This one is even finer. It is so fine that I was writing my homework with it the other day and I was having trouble. It was almost too fine for me for writing. I love extra fine pens for sketching, but for writing I like them just a little juicier, either fine to a medium point. Um, and I tend to want to press hard when I'm writing. The one thing that I found with this pen, well, I'll show you in a minute. So we'll get to that in a minute. The other thing that I was going to do today is review this book that somebody had brought to my attention. Um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten who it was that told me about the book. It was either Barbara or maybe it was Magdalena French. I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was. Um, I just, my brain is just frazzled, so... Um, but this book, she asked me if I had it, and I already had it. I think I've got probably 20 or 30 urban sketching books and stuff like that up there. So, And that doesn't include my Kindle. <laughs> but this one is called Sketching People, an Urban Sketcher's Manual to Drawing Figures and Faces. And since I have uh, made my resolution this year to get better with working with people... Um, people in my landscapes and that kind of thing. And also I want to learn how to do portraits because a friend of mine has asked me, the one who who wanted me to paint her cat, um, she loved that cat, and now she's asked me to paint her and her husband. And I said, oh, I'm not ready for that. Maybe I can give you a name of somebody else who would do a good job. And she said, oh, no, no, I want you to do it. And I said, okay, well, you're going to have to give me some time to practice and to take some classes online or whatever in order to, to learn how to do it. So that is my plan, but I have not done that yet. So right now I want to work on sketching people in landscapes like I did with that Amish farm landscape that you all have seen. This one that I did with the person in it and 
I was shocked at how well I did. I even got the coat blowing in the wind and all of that. So I was very happy with the way that that turned out. Um, all the detail on about a two inch figure. So um, anyway, and it didn't take me that long. I was shocked. So I think my biggest issue with painting figures is that I don't have um, the confidence level that I think that I should have, you know. So um, anyway, I bought a lot of people books in the last couple of years and I read them and then they sat on my shelf. But we're going to go ahead and review this one So, and I'm going to show you how this pen works. So let's turn the camera over and okay. we'll get to it. So the first thing I think we'll do is look at the pen. Oh, that's a paintbrush. Where the heck did I put the pen? Alrighty then. <laughs> it's under my book. What the heck? Okay, so let me just grab a piece of paper here. It's a piece of paper that I was doing a demonstration on. And one thing that I noticed with this pen, I had a little bit of leakage on the top. That's okay. As long as you dry it off, you're okay. Um, I'm using Polar Noodler's Polar Blue in here, which is a waterproof ink. And the one thing I noticed with this, I tend to have a tight grip on my on my pens all the time. Let me zoom in a little bit here so we can see. And I tend to have this tight grip like this. So when I'm writing, I write with my pen at this angle. Um, I'm not even sure what angle that is. Let me grab this and see if I can tell. I would say, if I'm writing at this angle, I'm writing at about, at about 40 degrees. And fountain pens can be made for different degrees of, of tilt on the nib. Some people like to write straight up and down. And when I'm working on homework and stuff and I get going, I'm working at probably an 80 degree angle and so this pen was skipping and I was having issues with it. If I'm writing like this, that is actually at about 70 degrees and it'll work for a little bit, um, but it works much better if I move my hand back on the pen a little bit, way back here and try to write at a lower angle, like this. And it writes very smoothly. Well, I can't write like that. I lose my lettering. Um, see how sloppy and shaky it gets? So I thought, I don't know if I can use this pen. You, you know, it just, it, it's just sloppy. But if I bring it up like this, I feel more comfortable. And then I start getting some skipping. It won't do it at first, but I can write a lot faster. Well, now it's not skipping. So maybe it was just air in my converter. That's possible. And since it's been sitting overnight, um, it's not a problem. But you can see how fine these lines are. The lines are just amazing. Um, look at how whisper thin I can get these lines. Here's a regular HB pencil. That's, that's the pencil line. And look at how much thinner these lines are. They're just so whisper thin. And then if I lift my lift my weight off, I can get even thinner. Look at how thin that is, which is great, especially if you're doing hatching, cross hatching, whatever. Um, you'll get really fine lines. Now drawing straight down, I can get a nice, nice thick line, or I can press lightly and get a thin line. Going across, I get about, I can get a thin line, but I can also get a thicker line. Um, now, upside down usually will make line thinner. Let's see what happens. I haven't tried this. I'm not getting anything. 
so this pen won't do anything upside down like some pens will. But anyway, I thought that this would be an excellent, excellent um, pen for doing sketches. Um, we'll see. I'm at a weird angle here. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Now on to the book review. Um, and this again is the Pilot uh, Pilot Pen. It's, what is it called? Oh great, it's probably all in Japanese or Chinese or something. Yes it is. So, But it's made by Pilot and it's a fountain pen. Um, let me look it up and see what it's called. Well, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in it. And like I said, they come in many colors. It's a beautiful looking pen. I love the looks of it. And it would also be great on my Pentalic books sitting up top like this um, when I'm going out sketching. This is Moleskine, so it doesn't have a pen holder. But anyway, on to this book review. Now, this book, again, is called Sketching People, an Urban Sketcher's Manual to Drawing Figures and Faces. That's the focus. It was written by Lynn Chapman, who is an avid urban sketcher, and you may recognize her face when we get into the book here. Um, she's got multiple sketches from different artists. It's not all her work. Um, and it starts out with the first section of the book called Getting Started. And Getting Started is all about your sketchbooks, your drawing materials, personalizing your kit, and then it starts to get into drawing. And then it takes the rest of the chapter focusing on um, drawing details of the eyes, ears, noses, depicting different ages, hairs, hands, feet, clothing, all of that stuff. Then section two, and it also gets into tone, and I'm going to discuss that with you in a little bit because I think she means value, but she keeps saying tone, so I want to talk about the difference. Um, then section two is about sketching out in the big wide world and talking about drawing different types in t different types of situations and things like that. Part three is about different styles and approaches, um, planning quickly, um, looking at people from a distance, creative coloring, um, painting before you draw it. That's interesting. And then um, chapter four is all about people on the move and working quickly with, with people. Um, getting the character of the person down very fast. Uh, and again, I need to post a video of a guy I watched that was so awesome explaining how he does that. And I'll, I'll try to find it, and I want to post it in, uh, in the uh, description, or I'll try to post it in the box at the end of the video. Uh, and this is Lynn Chapman. Those of you who are big into urban sketching may know her. Um, she, she's she been drawing most of her life and is a freelance illustrator. Um, and she does like teaching at the urban sketching symposiums and stuff like that. And uh, so this is the beginning of the book. Then she talks about what urban sketching is. And again, I can't stress it enough. Urban sketching is just basically keeping a diary of the world around you, um, telling a story, basically. Each page can tell a different story. It's not like a story throughout the book. You can plan a book like that, like if you're going on vacation and you're doing a travel book or whatever. But... Urban sketching is about telling a story, and it's kind of hard to tell a story without having people in the story. You know what I mean? Um, you can always draw sites without people, but adding people in is an important aspect of urban sketching, and that's part of the reason I really want to get into it again. So, And then here's some beautiful sketches by different artists, and again, there's Le Pen and his, his signature curved style with his people with big wild faces and the lined ledger paper that he loves to use so much. Um, 
Oh, let's see here. And we're going to get into... Oh, she talks about getting the most out of the page of your book and how to set it up, setting up your pages. Uh, keeping your sketchbook as a visual diary. That's, that's a big thing, like I was saying. And then we get into getting started. That was all the photo, forward, I mean, photo. That was the forward of the book. And then she gets into talking about sketchbooks, the different styles, the wire bound, and how it can be hard to go across the pages like she shows here versus a sewn binding that lays flat or a portrait book versus a landscape style book, and that's turned vertically. And there's a landscape style book at the bottom. Oh, this one's an accordion. So she talks about the different paper types, size and format, all of that. Uh, and then drawing materials, pens, fountain pens, pencils, um, graphite, oil pastel, and all of that. Um, then wet sketching materials. She gets into the brushes, water palettes, all of that kind of stuff. Most of you already have all that in your head or you already have a kit set up. But if you don't and you like to see how others set their kits up, these are some of the things that she loves to use. I want to get a seat like this for when I go urban sketching. Right now, though, I do have a chair, and as long as I'm not walking far, which I can't do anyway, um, it's very difficult for me. I need to have a back on my chair, too. I use one of those folding canvas chairs that has the side table on it, which is nice. It has a drink holder and all of that, and I really like that, but they're a little bit heavier. I almost wouldn't mind having one of these stools that turns in... It's a backpack that turns into a stool, but... Um, then she discusses people who always say, I cannot draw stick men. And I've been there before. I've said that. So, um, part of what she talks about is how children, um, don't have these fears. They'll draw stick figures and they think they're beautiful and, and they're fine with it, showing people their work. They love it. So, um... We need to get back to that a little bit, you know. Um, but then she gets into understanding tone. And to me, I think she's talking about value. And the reason I say that is because she keeps showing value changes in her sketches. But even though there is some tone change, she's discussing value. Tone is the intensity or the saturation of a color, you know, like... Uh, the the tone of a yellow can be different from a lemon yellow to a Hansa yellow to whatever. The intensity of the yellow, the the temperature, all of that goes into tone. Um, and it's about adding filler to decrease the percentage of pure pigment. Like, like uh, if you have a bright red and you need to tone it down to a light pink, you're going to add white to it. You're toning it down. Um, but value is the degree of light and dark in each color. So it's a fine line. It's hard for me to explain. Um, like the darkest colors in a composition tend to come forward and the lightest ones will recede. That's why when we like draw landscape, I like to draw all my trees in the background in a very light hue. And then I bring the value of that color forward and deepen it. Tone is just the saturation of the color and the intensity of the color. So um, there is a difference here. And shes I think she's meaning value. And shes a lot of artists tend to confuse the two. Uh, and I don't see where she discusses the difference. So it's a good thing to learn the difference. You can even Google it and find, find out the difference. Um, you need to keep your tone and your values correct no matter what medium you're using, but value is of huge importance. Chroma or color makes no difference. And this is a point she made here with this sketch. If you look at the sketch, he's all yellow, red, blue, purple, green, uh, all of that. But it seems to fit. And if you squint your eyes and look at him, he he just pops. But then down here, she changed the color to black and white and look at how perfect it looks 
the same thing. She just flipped it to black and white so that you could see the value. This is showing value. It also shows tone, which is very important. But when you read this, you might, you'll understand it better. Then she goes on to talking about the eyes and how to draw eyes and how they're a sphere and how you need to draw a sphere, adding glasses. She talks about ears in great detail. She even gives the um, anatomy of an ear and how they can be different from person to person. Then she goes on to noses and mouths, um, drawing those. Am I in frame? I hope I'm in frame. Yeah, pretty much. Let me move it this way. Um, then she talks about ages. This is really important, too, because our, our bodies change over time. Our faces change. I mean, you look at a baby versus an elderly person um, and a middle-aged person. Uh, their, their faces are very different. The, where their, their lips are in comparison to their nose is different, all of that. And she discusses all of that here. And then also hair, how some people find it very difficult to draw hair um, because they get overwhelmed by all the detail that they're seeing in the hair. But it doesn't need to be hard, like this one with the curly hair down here. It's just shaky curly hair. And this guy here with braids, oh, that's the braids, but this one, uh, the dreadlocks. You know they're dreadlocks just by looking at it, but it doesn't really depict a dreadlock. Your, fit, your brain is just telling you that's what it is. Um, then she goes on to drawing hands, how you can draw a hand using shapes. Um, feet, hands and feet are difficult. Hands especially. You can put shoes on feet. <laughs> um... And then she discusses clothing, adding the clothing, putting in the wrinkles of the clothing. Um, then, um, oh, and prints in the clothing. I saw an Instagram photo a friend of mine posted the other day. It was so beautiful. She, This woman that she painted in watercolor, she added lace to the top. Her top was all lace. But when I looked at it closely, it was nothing but scribbles but my brain saw it as lace. Then, then chapter two is getting out in the big wide world and she discusses um, drawing in scary places and that kind of thing and how to get through it, um, who to choose, how you're gonna choose your, your victim, so to speak. Um, there's just some beautiful sketches in here. Drawing people sleeping, the relaxed nature of their faces, reading, texting. She goes into all of it. Eating and drinking. Hairdressers. In the street. Strangers on a train. And then in chapter three, she discusses the different styles and approaches to sketching. Using pencil, using watercolor, um, crayon, uh, here, this one's done in watercolor. This one is mixed media. This one is watercolor. And you can do watercolor pencil and then just kind of color some of it out and leave some of the lines behind. So, um, and then she talks about creative coloring. This is a beautiful sketch. I just love this sketch. It's so gorgeous. I want to see who did this. Um, well, maybe it's hers. Yeah, it doesn't give credit to anyone. So this must be Lynn's. It's a beautiful, beautiful sketch. I just love it. Um, so this book is really, really an interesting book. I've had it for a couple of years, and I never read through the whole thing because I got intimidated by the people. So I wanted to um, just shove it on a shelf and say, okay, maybe someday. And then when the viewer... Um, was telling me about this book that she had, and she thought that it would be a great book. I said, oh, I have this book. So, um, and this talks, this last portion is about people on the move. So you're drawing people that are moving around, uh, people in a band, people dancing. Um, and I'm going to try and post this video from this artist that I follow. He's awesome, talking about drawing um, people on the move. So anyway, this book it was... 
It retails in the U.S. for $19.99, in Canada $23.99. This is old. I received this a few years ago, and I know I didn't pay full price for it. Um, but I thought it was new when I got it. Copyright, oh, 2016. So I must have got it a year ago. Must have got it early last year, right when it came out. That could be because it seems like it's been years, but it's only been a year. So anyway, um, I will put a link to this book also, uh, Sketching People by Lynn Chapman, an Urban Sketcher's Manual to Drawing Figures and Faces. If you're interested, it's an awesome book. So everybody have a great day, and I am going to go ahead and keep working. I did work a little bit on my um, doodle and sketch, just doing a landscape, and it was not coming out well. I didn't finish it yet, um, but I used four colors the four colors that came in the set, and then I realized, oh, I didn't use the pens at all. So tomorrow when I find out what the challenge is going to be, I am going to use it for that. Um, and also, I had a little book that I was going to show you of the people I have been sketching. Ha! Huh, well, isn't that funny? I can't find it. So it must have been a uh, a purposeful slip because... I wasn't real keen on showing it to you yet anyway, but what I'm using are those little bitty folding sketchbooks, the, just the little four by six sketchbooks, and I'm just putting people in it. So um, people I see online, people I watch on TV, trying to get them in, in the book. So um, don't be afraid to do it. Just get yourself one of those little sketchbooks. Here, I'll get it. Hang on one second. Okay. Whew. I'm out of breath. That hurt. <laughs> um, I have this little makeup bag that I keep in my purse. And I just throw a pencil or pen in it. And um, this houses a few sketchbooks that I carry around. Um, these are the two that I bought on vacation last summer that I thought were just so pretty. And I don't think I've used them yet. No. Even the inside is pretty. But... Um, they're just little, simple little sketchbooks. Did I use this one at all? Just a little note that I had written. Oh, I did start to once. I know exactly where that is. <laughs> That's in my pain clinic while I was waiting to be called in, and I only got that far. And I was called. It was a table with two chairs coming out. And I started to draw it, and then they called me, so I had to stop. But that was all I put in it. Um, but in this one, this one is peeling up. I need to glue that down. But this is an old uh, De La Rowney sketchbook. I think it came as a free gift with something that I... Um, that was a sketch that I put in with pencil uh, a while back, and then... This, these are a few of the people that I drew. They were from a book, and then, uh, then I started working on uh, somebody. Uh, oh, this is horrible, you guys! I even put yikes a couple of people on a YouTube video that I was watching the other day, just a couple of days ago. But anyway, you get the idea. It doesn't need to be pretty, and I normally would not show anybody that that stuff, but. Um, I'm going to just fill this book every day with something so that I finish it up and then I'm going to move on to the next one and the next one. And hopefully by the time I get through three of them, I'll be really comfortable with drawing people. So I'm going to take my pen and my book and I will get to it. So be courageous, you guys. Paint with wild abandon. Draw with wild abandon. And most of all, be kind to each other. God bless.